Hey. Did you guys know? Um, so the the official numbers for G four are in, and Ooh. do you know yeah. that Simcast did better than G four? I'm not surprised. Oh Isn't boy, this crazy! Nielsen wow. numbers confirm Comcast failed G four revival was the lowest watched television network of 2022. Wow. Uh, they, they say the numbers don't lie. And according to the year end television ratings report from Nielsen, Comcast's quickly shuttered attempt at reviving G4 was unsurprisingly an abysmal failure in terms of viewership. I uh, love that picture of him clapping. Oh, oh, talk about a fancy seal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's no hyperbole either, as per an overview of the metric analysis agency's findings shared by IndieWire, G4 had the worst primetime audience numbers of all 126 standard cable channels currently offered to American audiences. Wow. Oh. Wow. I would never think they had more views than Timcast. I wouldn't even think that was on the same level. No, at all. we have Simpcast <laughs> has more views. Yeah, than that's G4. what I mean. I would assume he did, and they had. I would have just assumed Tim had way more what views. Oh my than them. goodness! I would Only never think that. A thousand viewers. How bad was G 4s 2.0's last <laughs> place finish during its brief run from November 2021 to October 2022? The network managed to pull an average of a thousand viewers. Only a wow. thousand viewers for during three hours during the period hours. of eight to eleven Time p.m. Time. every wow. Monday through Friday. That is low. They not put to toot, so much money not into to that. toot my own horn, but there's like 1,755 people watching this yeah. right now. Well, oh, Gina, uh, just attacked all of your viewers, like who watches right the exactly. Channel. There's only, not, and then only a couple, we only tack a few at a time. That's the key. It also just <laughs> wasn't, never did this happen. <laughs> it wasn't put together very smart. They're trying to appeal to a group of gamers who aren't actually really gamers, and uh, not only that, but a lot of gamers are looking for content creators who are just keeping it real and stuff. That's why. You know, the YouTube space for that is uh, t takes off and does perfectly well because people want opinions from people that they can relate to and that they'll take seriously. But when you just have these personalities mm -hmm. instead of just like, okay, we're keeping it real. I actually play these games I'm talking about. I actually think it's good or I actually think it's bad. It, it just lacks that authenticity that you get more from uh, an independent uh, creator. They took advantage of the reputation. They took advantage. They thought, oh, well, this was really successful. And instead of taking the things that worked and made it successful the first time, they're exactly. just like, they, they, they just banked on the, their being successful. They assumed uh, arrogantly that the same success would come. The same audience would be there as it was with like the fun hot girls no. making fun of themselves. They're like, oh, I'm sure we'll have all those same numbers, but we can have this cunty in your face feminist um, talking about you know sexism and gaming rather than like the shit that actually meant. It was just like a recipe for disaster. It was really arrogance on their oh, yeah. part. Dude, the yeah. whole gaming industry as a whole is catering and changing things for people who don't play their games. Thank like, you! Yes, like, exactly! You oh, play your shit and you're like awful. changing it. They, they keep doing it. That. So yes. dumb. That's why I play retro games. Every industry is doing that. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Last month, the, the NHL put out a tweet. Trans women are real women. And it's oh, like, I know. who is I'm your like, fucking audience? Wow. Man? Yeah, exactly. Like, who are they? You're trying. That's them trying to impress investors. It's like, that's yeah, all exactly. they care We're about instead of their everything. audience. <laughs> Uh, for ahead. comparison, the other network, which debuted this year alongside G4, the telenovela dedicated uh, Gala Novelas TL Novelas came in 114th with 15,000 average viewers. <laughs> the telenovelas wow, are goodness. kicking their ass. Just above G4 in the ratings were the outdoor hunting oriented network Pursuit Channel, oh which ranked God. 125 <laughs> with 2,000 average primetime viewers and the foreign MENA region wow. sports network Be In Sports, which ranked 124 with 3,000 average primetime viewers. The video game network was also beat out by Comedy.tv, uh, 121 with 4,000 viewers, a channel dedicated to clips from various stand up comedy acts. 
God, comedy TV, that's so fucking old. And Clio TV, 116 with 12,000 viewers whose programming is made solely for the demographic of younger black oh women. God. Uh, to put G4's disastrous performance wow. into further perspective, the Jeez. top three most watched cable networks were MSNBC, which which was number three with 1.208 million viewers, ESPN at number two with 1.915 million viewers, and Fox News, which was number one with 2.330 million viewers. I wonder many- if the jewelry selling channel also outperformed them. Probably they were dead fucking last. While many will understandably rush to cite former exploit host Indiana Frost's black, now infamous sexism and gaming rant as the reason for the network's failure to capture any sort of audience, it should be noted that while her identity politics laden screed was undoubtedly a major factor in this regard, the writing was on the wall for G4 before it even returned to air. As explained by Bounding Into Comics' own Jacob Smith in the immediate aftermath of G4's second collapse, even aside from its abysmal choice in hosts, the odds for success for G4 in 2022 were even worse than they were in the late 2000s thanks to one simple factor, the internet. Hear me out here, though. In this picture, particularly, Frost actually looks pretty there. She looks like a she hot dude in this picture. Good <laughs> if she wanted boy to, I, think. I think she actually, yeah, I think it, it's her style that's uh, that's yeah, because she she's not an ugly person. No, she's thin. If she fixed we her teeth some, and some grew some her hair out. Yes. Yeah. Just grow your hair out a little. Like, not even. Just right. It doesn't it, she cleavage first. Sure, if she wants, but just not. Teeth second. No, just teeth first. Longer. Teeth first. Tits second. <laughs> Yeah. Show some leg. Like she's thin, so she shouldn't like she could do legs and yeah. like, you know, I'm not shoulder, here for you. You want a bang. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's saying like if you're not gonna grow your hair out, you can at least like you know what I mean, work with what you do the, the sexy pixie, you know, right. I mean, like fairy yeah. vampy like thing. Like that cat woman. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's a look. Yeah. yeah. She's going for Justin Bieber meets Carol Brady. Yeah. M&M I think she transition. looks like Machine Gun Kelly and Taylor Swift. Like yes. if they had a kid, <laughs> yeah, she does look like that. Machine Gun Kelly. That's definitely what she looks like to me. With outlets like YouTube and Twitch allowing for regular players to make let's plays, cover gaming news, and entertain with original content, said Smith. Likewise, esports has brought a significant rise to both the popularity and public support of multiplayer games. <laughs> uh, what was once considered niche has now become mainstream so much so that the market has become somewhat saturated. He wrote. So in this environment, how could a network that struggled to find an audience 12 years ago, effectively endear itself to viewers today? Well, we know now the answer to this question. Smith concluded his Mm -hmm. analysis. They couldn't. Oh, doom from the start. I loved her nerve damaged gray teeth. (laughs) Yeah. It looks like she drank like something made of charcoal. A oh my bit. god! I I would love to give Frost a makeover. Like I really think like mm-hmm. she's not completely unfortunate looking. Like I would. It's her styling. Put her in a it cocktail is. dress. Thousand percent her styling. I she agree. needs a cocktail dress. She needs a better. If you're gonna do a short haircut, you got to do a better, cuter pixie. Yeah. You got to do boobs. Got to do legs. You got to like. She bring would it. look good with like a a pinup style. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would look nice. We said cocktail dress. Yeah, I with like her tattoos that. and stuff, too, it'd actually be a nice yeah. contrast there. Gotta do heels. Like, Red- if you're not gonna do long hair, you gotta do everything right. else. Yeah. yeah. I agree. We could have saved you, Frosk. <laughs> <laughs> but you kept wearing sweatshirts and nose rings. Ugh. But she wasn't here to be nice on the eyes for us. Or hey, on the ears. Or anything. Did, did, did any of you audition for G4? I know. I must have lost. I it. was asked to. What? But I didn't Dia, do it. really? I I did an audition, but I sent in like a a, ta- a submitted oh. a tape. You to guys would have submitted a, a tape rather. Times sorry. Can you imagine if you they hired so Melanie and Zia instead of fucking Frost? It would have been fun. Anybody here would have crushed so it. Even Cecil would have been more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cecil with the mask. Oh. Uh. 